good morning students welcome to the class uh, so today we are going to discuss about bio macro molecules so in the last class we discussed about bio micro molecules now we are moving on to bio macro molecules right so macro as the name suggests what do you mean by macro micro means a smaller one right and when it comes to macro it means that a bigger size so these micro molecules are combining together in particular fashion and they are getting converted into macro molecules right now this bio macro molecules if you see it has been divided into three types so what are the three types of bio macro molecules one is your proteins second one is your polysaccharide and third one is your nucleic acid so first is protein second is polysaccharide and third is nucleic acids now moving on to the proteins proteins what is the simple form of proteins it's amino acid isn't it so this amino acids combine together with a peptide bond and they are making up proteins now if you see this protein under protein we are going to discuss about its uh, structure and its functions okay now structure of protein if you are seeing the protein can be classified into four main structures so what are the basic structures of protein there are four types what are they number 1 is your primary structure number 2 is your secondary structure number 3 is your tertiary structure and number 4 is your quaternary structure means the protein remains one and the same but as as such you view it in three dimensional two dimensional images are like that isn't it so if you are viewing it like that they have different structures so i will show you what are the different structure you can see primary structure so this is the primary structure just the chemical uh, composition if you are just writing it down then you get what the primary structure secondary structure this is depicting the secondary structure of protein this is the tertiary structure of protein you see it becomes more complex and the most complex is the one which is called as what the quaternary structure so these are the different structures of protein so proteins are of four structures what are they primary secondary tertiary and quaternary right now so structure is done next move we are moving on to the functions so proteins you know our body is made up of proteins and you know that proteins are the building block of our life isn't it so our body the building block is what the proteins so proteins are playing innumerable number of roles in our body so what are the different roles which is played by the proteins in our body number one is that the enzymes which are needed for carrying out various metabolic activities or various chemical reaction all these enzymes when you see they are mostly proteinaceous in nature example you take whether it is lipase trypsin pepsin renin or whatever the enzymes are mostly they are proteinaceous in nature so that is number one function so proteins are functioning as enzymes enzymes when you see they are proteinaceous right <coughs> excuse me the second one is your hormones so you know what is hormones isn't it hormones are secreted by endocrine gland and they are directly poured into the blood and they have their effect on the target organ now when you are seeing this hormones they are also made up of proteins like thyroxin or insulin you have learned isn't it so they are also having a protein composition next is your receptors so what do you mean by receptors see a cell have to uh, reduce the sugar level what they want to reduce it sugar level for that what is needed hormone is needed which hormone is needed insulin hormone is needed right now this sugar level has to be reduced the insulin have to uh, be means has to be taken by this cells and thereafter the reaction has to be carried out the reaction to start there are some substances chemical substances which are present on the plasma membrane where it is present it is present on the plasma membrane so these uh, substances are proteinaceous we call them as receptors what do we call them receptors so whenever there is a need for a chemical reaction when the hormone comes to that cell where the chemical reaction has to be carried out who will sense it the receptors are this chemical substances which are sensing what is to be done and uh, when the receptor sense the membrane sense it so immediately what will happen in the cell you can find the metabolic activity is being carried out what is the metabolic activity here the metabolic activity is conversion of 
uh, sugar means when you are seeing the sugar is being converted into complex form so thereby reducing the blood sugar level ok. So that is the function of these receptors. So receptors are proteinaceous substance where it is present it is present in the plasma membrane and what is it doing the receptors are acting like sensory organs sensory parts which are helping in carrying out the metabolic reaction only when the receptor respond you can find the reaction is taking place right. So that is regarding your receptor next is your transport protein example very good example is what hemoglobin is not it. So this hemoglobin is a globin when you are seeing iron containing heme part is also there as well as the globin protein part is also there and this protein is responsible for hemoglobin you know helping in transport of oxygen as well as uh, uh, the carbon dioxide also to some extent uh, from one part of a body to another is not it. So but transporting substances hemoglobin is playing a major role now when you see this hemoglobin composition it is also made up of protein next is your antibodies so what is an antibody you know if a germ get into my body the germ we term it as what antigen against the antigen what will be secreted antibodies so the germ is getting into my body so when this germ is getting into my body what I will be doing my WVC will immediately see that germ has got into my body they will start producing a proteinaceous substance called as what we call it as antibodies and this antibodies is going to fight with the antigen and neutralize its effect. So as a barrier you can find this antibodies is playing a major role right. Now this antibodies are also proteinaceous in nature. So that is again the next function of protein and the last function is intracellular ground substance you know have learned collagen elastin fibers which are present in our body collagen fibers tendons ligaments and all when you are learning you have learned it isn't it. So these fibers when you see they are also proteinaceous in nature. So what we have discussed today we have discussed about protein first isn't it. Now this proteins when you are seeing the structure is of four types functions they are acting like enzymes they are acting like hormones they are acting like receptors they are helping in transporting substances they are helping in fighting germs like antibodies and they are forming the ground substance in our body. So these are the various functions of what the various functions of this uh, protein right with this we are coming to the end of protein now we are moving on to polysaccharides so what is the next topic what we are going to discuss polysaccharides so what do you mean by this polysaccharides polysaccharides is carbohydrates what it is carbohydrate a complex form of carbohydrates now this polysaccharide is in turn divided into two parts what are the two parts of polysaccharide one is homopolysaccharides and another one is heteropolysaccharides. So what is the difference between this homo and hetero? Homopolysaccharides if you are seeing they are made up of same monomer unit means they are made up of same small small units and what is heteropolysaccharides they are made up of different small small units. So if it is same it comes the term which we use is homo and if it is different the term which we use is hetero ok. So homopolysaccharides I will show you the picture you can see this is a homopolysaccharide this is similar to this is similar to this is not it all are having alcoholic group. So this is an example for what homopolysaccharide now when you are seeing this is an example for heteropolysaccharide hetero means what this one is having ketone and this one is having alcohol group is not it. So this is similar to this no it is not similar it is different which means that they are having different monomer units which are combining together to form a polymer right. So here hetero means they are different and homo means they are same if the uh, carbohydrate is having same units repeating units we call it as homopolysaccharides and if it is having different repeating units then we call it as heteropolysaccharide examples are given you can just note it down. Now moving on to the next type of bio macro molecule that is nucleic acid ok. So nucleic acids if you are speaking about it has been divided into two types which we have already covered what are the two types one is your DNA and another one is your RNA moving on to RNA first you know what is RNA ribonucleic acid ok. So RNA is the 
ribonucleic acid in some organism you can find this rna is the genetic material but in us rna is not a genetic material but rna is are present in our body and they are playing a major role in protein synthesis okay now this rna is carrying out protein synthesis with the help of ribosomes and this rna can be classified into three types so what are the three types of rna one is your messenger rna mrna what do we call them mrna what is the full form messenger rna the second one is your transfer rna that is trna transfer rna and the third one is your ribosomal rna rrna rrna is what ribosomal rna ribosome containing rna so these are the three types of rnas now moving on to dna when you see the dna you know dna is what deoxyribonucleic acid okay so deoxyribonucleic acid is dna and our body when you are seeing what is the genetic makeup in our body that is being a uh, genetic component when you are seeing it's made up of what it is made up of dna now when you look into the structure of dna it's a bit important for plus 2 level for just i will be explaining what it is in uh, birds eye view form okay so listen so i have told you there are um, means nitrogenous bases so what are the nitrogenous bases adenine thiamine guanine cytosine right so they are the nitrogenous bases which are present in the dna but in in uh, uracil is present in rna right now this adenine thiamine guanine cytosines are all the ladders ladders means what the steps right so there is backbone when you are seeing the backbone if you are seeing it is made up of sugar so this is sugar this is phosphorus this is sugar this is phosphorus so you can find this uh, uh, ladders this adenine is com combined with uh, sugar then when adenine is combining with sugar what they form they form nucleoside isn't it and when it is combining with phosphorus they form nucleotides so one is side and another one is tides okay so like this you can find the structure of dna will be somewhat like this actually it is like this it is a helical structure double stranded this is one strand and this one is the other strand but when you are looking it uh, clearly if you just uh, look into it if you are just unwinding this double strand and you are noting it it will be like this you are having the nitrogenous bases in the center and thereafter with the hydrogen bond they will be bonded and thereafter sugar and phosphate is forming what the backbone so uh, it can be represented like nitrogenous bases sugar and phosphate okay so this is the structure of dna and you know dna is the genetic uh, makeup and that is the hereditary uh, message being carried from one generation to another by this dna okay so that is again a type of biomacro molecules so this with this biomacro molecules are over hope so it's clear it has been divided into three types proteins thereafter you have polysaccharides and then you have nucleic acids proteins structure and functions we discussed polysaccharides types we discussed okay and thereafter nucleic acid types with its uh, some points we have discussed isn't it now we are moving on to another topic called as enzymes so what is the next topic enzymes okay so here it's missing it's enzyme now when you are seeing what are the different types of enzymes okay so the types of enzyme can be classified into classes of enzymes are present one is oxidoreductase second one is transferase third one is hydrolases fourth one is lyases fifth one is ligases and the sixth one is isomerases we will be discussing in detail one by one now other than that the rest of the things we will cover and then we will come to class of enzymes okay now what are the different factors which are affecting the enzyme action so you know what is an enzyme enzyme is actually a catalyst we call them as bio catalyst okay so uh, imagine this is a reaction s one um, sub, uh, substance is reacting when s1 is reacting with s2 and it is giving a product okay so if this product is formed this is a chemical reaction isn't it if the enzyme is not present then the rate of the reaction will be slow if an enzyme is present here imagine in this chemical reaction one enzyme is present means what will happen is that the reaction will become more faster the faster the process will be taking place right so that is the role of what this bio catalyst so bio catalyst why we are calling it what is a catalyst catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of 
chemical reaction. Since it is a metabolic reaction which is taking place in a living organisms, we give them a name biocatalyst. So, enzymes increases the rate of metabolic reaction that is why it is referred to as what we call it as biocatalyst. Okay. Now, what are the different factors which are affecting the enzyme action? The first thing means the enzyme will be affected means its role will be affected it will not be properly functioning in case some disturbance are there. So, what are the disturbances what are the factors? Okay. The first one is temperature. Now, temperature you see the enzyme when you see the temperature should be optimum whether it is temperature pH or substrate whatever it is there is a term called as optimum optimum means what correct number if it is present that much then the reaction will be going on very fastly if uh, below this optimum or above this optimum whether it is temperature or whether it is uh, pH or whatever it is okay if any substances means uh, the what will happen is that uh, the enzymatic activity will be slowed down it will not be going on in that speed right so if it is low also it is not that good if it is high also it is not that good at optimum temperature if you are maintaining the activity will be very high normal optimum temperature ok. So, temperature maximum activity is at optimum temperature yes inactive at low temperature when if the temperature is very low enzyme will not function they are inactive they are sleeping. Now, when the temperature is very much high then also it is dangerous why because that temperature will cause since they are proteins right. So, what will happen the bonding and all will break and the protein will get denatured the protein structure will be lost and the enzyme function will be gone right. So, that is how temperature is affecting the pH is also optimum pH is needed below as well as above the optimum pH what will happen the enzyme activity will decrease which means that the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction which is taking place the reaction metabolic reaction rate will come down right. So, that is regarding pH now next is substrate concentration listen substrate concentration when the substrate substrate means what uh, any reaction is taking place you see this is a substrate substrate means what something has to be broken out for example you see uh, this is sugar what it is sugar ok sugar is to be broken down into glucose so what is the product the product is glucose right now this substrate sugar has to be broken down into product if an enzyme is present ok the reaction will go on at a faster rate right now listen very carefully if the substrate concentration goes on increasing means means sugar concentration goes on increasing obviously the product concentration will also increase means the reaction will be going on very fast but the sugar concentration is going on increasing all the time you cannot find that the process is going on after some time there will be a break ok at optimum level when it comes thereafter you cannot find if at all you add a substance the reaction will not be taking place like you are eating eating to some extent you come and stop is not it thereafter if you add also the process will not take place you cannot have your food more it will be coming out is not it the same here also substances substrate is needed but up to an optimum level Be above that when you are giving then the reaction will not take place if the substrate is less also the reaction will be at very slow rate because uh, the substrate is less so that much product only will be formed right so that is regarding the substrate which is also affecting the enzymatic activity ok so is uh, particular concentration you can find the substrate if present it is good thereafter if it is less or more it is not that good the reaction will not be taking place. Now, the next thing what we are going to discuss is uh, this diagram I did not explain. So, this is this diagram you see. So, for an enzyme to act upon ok. So, you listen this one is the enzyme ok this is the enzyme and this is the substrate ok. Now, what is happening the enzymes uh, when you are seeing there is an active site for enzyme this site is called as for the active site. So, imagine this is the sugar ok. So, the sugar is going and binding with this active site the active sites are region where the substrate the enzymes and the substrate is linking together. So, the substrate is going and binding with the active site and they are forming what enzyme substrate complex what will be formed enzyme substrate complex 
after this what will happen is that the reaction even when the complex is formed immediately you can find what is taking place the reaction is taking place after the reaction has taken place what is happening is that the uh, substrate in substrate would have been converted into the product because the reaction has taken place right so the enzyme will be there the products whichever product has been formed it will be coming out like for example if it is uh, glucose it's broken down into carbon dioxide and water means the carbon dioxide and water is the product which will be released okay so any reaction to take place the enzyme if it is there the process will be fast what the enzyme do the enzyme goes and binds to the active site of the substrate okay the substrate comes and bind to the active site of the enzyme and they form a complex reaction gets faster and the products are formed okay so that is how this uh, reaction is taking place now inhibitors are also there which affect the enzyme action what are the types of inhibitors you see there are two inhibitors competitive inhibitors and non competitive inhibitors so what is the difference between this competitive and non competitive inhibitors see listen competitive inhibitors are substances which are having the active site similar to that of the substrate okay they are chemical that resembles an enzyme normal substrate and compete with them so this is actually my substrate which has to go and bind with this enzyme and the reaction has to take place but there was a competitive inhibitor this blue color they have come and binded over here now whether the reaction will take place no the substrate is not finding the place to go and bind isn't it so the reaction will not be taking place and uh, the process will be hindered process will come to stop right so they are the competitive inhibitors means the inhibitor is having the shape like the substrate and uh, the competitive inhibitor is having the shape like a substrate and they go and bind with the enzyme and thereafter the pro reaction will not take place another one is your non competitive inhibitors how this inhibitors act actually this non competitive inhibitors they do not have the shape like a substrate but these non competitive inhibitors they don't go and bind with the active site this is the active site where the substrate is going to bind their competitive inhibitors has been binded and thereafter reaction is not taking place here the substrate uh, is uh, we have to bind it over the active site but what happens is that this competitive non competitive inhibitor they come and bind with some other site of the enzyme and change the shape of the enzyme and the active site of the enzyme is changed now when the active site the structure is changed do you think the substrate can go and bind they cannot go and bind and the reaction will not be taking place as a normal rate okay so these are the various ways by which the inhibitors reduce the rate of what the chemical reaction or the metabolic reaction so what we discussed we discussed about the factors which are affecting the enzyme action one is the optimum temperature the reaction will be more optimum ph the reaction will be more substrate concentration the ph will be uh, sorry the correct amount of substrate will increase the what the rate of the reaction below and above all these things when you are saying below and above is not good inhibitors there are two types one is competitive and another one is non competitive competitive inhibitors they resemble the substrate non competitive inhibitors they do not resemble the substrate right now moving on to the different types of enzymes enzymes can be classified into two enzyme two types okay so what are the two types of enzyme one is your simple enzyme and another one is your conjugate enzyme what is the difference between the simple enzyme and the conjugate enzyme simple enzyme is simple as the name suggests it's very simple they are made up of only protein molecules and what is the next one conjugate enzyme the conjugate enzyme is one which is having other than protein some other substances also in it okay so then we call them as what conjugative enzymes this conjugative enzyme if you see they are of two types so what are the two types of conjugative enzyme what are conjugative enzyme they are having protein structure along with that in that protein some other substances also present okay this other substances is also present based on that they can be classified into apo enzyme and cofactors okay apo enzyme is inactive form of enzymes only when some cofactors goes and bind with this enzyme 
then only they became active. So, that type of enzymes we call it as what? Apo enzyme, they are inactive forms of enzymes, ok. And some other chemical substances, organic or inorganic, have to go and bind with that. Then only they will start uh, responding to the uh, reaction, they will act like enzymes, ok. The next is your cofactor. The based on the cofactor, the nature of the um, non protein composition, they are of three types. So, what are they? One is coenzyme, second one is prosthetic group, and the third one is metal ions, ok. So, coenzyme, coenzyme example is NAD and NADP, adenine nicotinine, adenine dinucleotide phosphate, ok. So, that is an example, just learn the types in detail, it is not necessary. Posthetic group heme, ion containing compound is present along with the protein, the globin, is not it? So, then we call them as conjugate enzyme. So, hemoglobin is a conjugate enzyme, ok. And other one is your what? Metal ions, ok. Metal ions like zinc, carbonic anhydrase, if you are seeing in that zinc is a uh, substance which is present other than protein. So, that is again, metal ion is acting as a cofactor and they are forming what conjugate enzymes right. So, these are the different types of enzymes. So, what are the different types simple and conjugate? Conjugate can be divided into two more what are they? One is apo and another one is cofactor. This cofactor is divided into three what are they? Coenzyme, prosthetic group and metal ions ok. Uh, so, this is done. Next we are moving on to classes of enzyme. 6 classes of enzymes are present. So, what are the 6 classes of enzymes? As already discussed, what are the 6 class? One is your oxidoreductase, second one is your transferases and the third one is your hydrolases, fourth is lyases, isomerases and ligases. Now, one by one we will be discussing, ok. So, the first one is oxidoreductase or dehydrogenase. So, what is this enzyme class of enzymes doing? This class of enzymes when you are seeing they are helping in the oxidization and reduction division, ok, addition and removal of hydrogen. So, oxygen uh, oxidization as well as reduction division is being carried out by these set of enzymes. So, you like for example, CS is what the substrate, the substance is the reactants which is mixing, is not it? So, one is H reduced one, another one substrate is S dash oxidized. So, one is reduced form and another one is oxidized form. When this enzyme act on this sort of substrate, the substrate what happened is that uh, one is getting which was reduced is getting oxidized and which was oxidized is getting reduced. So, this type of reaction we call it as what oxidoreductase, oxidization reduced substance is getting oxidized and that oxidized substance is getting reduced, right. The next is your transferases. So, as the name suggests, what do you mean by the term transferases? Transfer of functional groups, ok. So, here the functional group is transferred. So, like for example, you see here this is a substrate which is having one group, maybe alcohol C um, OH group or uh, CHO aldehyde group or ketone group. So, G is what the group which is present in the substrate, ok. This group when another substrate S dash is uh, reacting with it, you can find uh, the group is transferred to S dash. So, S is there in the product S will be present and this G will be transferred to which one S dash. So, it will become S dash G. So, like that they are helping in transferring of functional group from one to another. So, functional group from here is being transferred over here, ok. So, like this you are getting a product where the functional group is transferred from that of the reactant. So, that is the role of transferases. Hydrolases, they are helping in hydrolysis, you know hydrolysis of water breaking down you have learned, is not it? So, they are he helping in breaking down of the substances, ok. So, this uh, breaking down of the substances means the breaking down of the bond between the chemical compounds is being carried out by whom? This hydrolases, ok. So, this breaking down other than hydrolysis of uh, the rest of the breaking down like for here, here hydrolysis is not present, water is not present. So, rest of the hydrolysis when you are seeing is being carried out by uh, another set of enzymes means breaking down of the bond is carried out by another set of enzyme called as what lyases, ok. So, one is hydrolysis which is helping in hydrolysis process and breaking down of bond is taking place. Lyases other than hydrolysis if the bond is broken, if the bond is broken, ok. So, they are like that the bond is broken and they are forming what x, z, um, y 
and C C is uh, forming an another compound, is not it? X Y plus C C is formed by breaking this bond. So, if other than hydrolysis, if the bond is broken, we call them as what? Lysis. So, hydrolysis is helping in hydrolysis of ester or ether or peptide bond and lyases when you are seeing they are helping in breaking down removal of the groups uh, from the substrate other than what hydrolysis ok leaving the double bonds will be formed in case of lyases. Now the last two uh, more what is that one is isomerases and another one is ligases. Ligases you know they help in joining of the bonding means bond they help in joining linking the substances. If two compound AS and AS dash is present they both are joined together with the help of enzyme called as what ligases. So, function of ligases is what they help in joining ligase that was lyase what we discussed later sorry uh, previously. Now, we are going to discuss about ligase. Ligase what they are doing they are helping in joining the uh, substances ok and isomerases they are helping in uh, catalyzing uh, isomerization reaction. You know what I mean by isomers? Isomers means you see fructose as well as galactose are somewhat similar to one another. They are isomers, is not it? Isomers means what? They have some more structure similar, but when the group will be in here and there the groups will be near seeing they are just interchanged, but the things remains one and the same. The chemical composition remains one and the same, but when you are seeing uh, the structure will be a bit different. So, this isomerization reaction is being catalyzed by an enzyme called as what isomerase. So, what are the different types of enzyme we discussed? We discussed about oxidoreductase which helps in oxidation and reduction reaction. Transferases they are helping in transferring functional group from one to another. Hydrolases they are helping in hydrolysis process. Lyases they are helping in breaking down of bond uh, other than hydrolysis. Isomerases is helping in isomerization reaction and ligase is helping in joining of chemical substances. With this uh, we come to the end of the chapter, chapter biomolecules. Hope it is clear. Thank you.